Good afternoon and welcome to This Is Private Practice, the first episode for the week and it's a Tuesday. Hurrah! And I wasn't here on Friday either so it's been a bit of a, bit of a while. Oh my lord, my tongue does not want to work today. Uh, pretty tired, going to admit that. Pretty, pretty tired today. So um, didn't have This Is Private Practice on Friday because my lovely husband organised for me to have a massage which I now think is something that should be in my monthly self-care routine somehow. That was kind of a very, very pleasant and worthwhile experience. And then yesterday, I had my final in-room speaking engagement for 2018. And I need to go back over my magical spreadsheet somewhere uh, and, and find out how many speaking engagements I've actually done this year because I, I think I've done more than one a month. And I... Um, Really enjoyed this yesterday. I was speaking at the Australian Rehabilitation Providers Association and, and to be honest, that is the peer group that I find I get the most uh, nervous about, um, despite the fact that I, I know my content so well and uh, really want to contribute to the industry. I think for me, being doing doing well and being thought of well is, is so important that I put, put a lot of pressure on myself. But it was a great room yesterday, really well engaged, and I got some fabulous feedback, even from people who've been in the profession as long or longer than, than I have, saying thank you for the reminder and giving us new ways of being able to look at the, the same information and, and do things a bit differently. And if you've been following the progress of, of the book, you'll, you'll notice that one of the people um, who makes an appearance in the book, Angela Lockworth, she kind of talks about the fact that there's not really anything new under the sun, but we've got these new people and new ways of thinking and new ways of presenting information so that you can actually bring what you know into a modern audience. Hello lovely Nicola, it's lovely to see you. I know I've got a couple of messages I haven't responded to. I'm coming, I promise. Oh, Amber Hawley, you've got some really cool stuff happening. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so what I, what I wanted to share with you was even though I was presenting yesterday on the information that I feel is as old, you know, as Adam and his mother um, and I got, got frustrated about 12 months ago because I'm like why are we still talking about this thing for, for us in our industry it's about talk, talking about a biopsychosocial approach which is basically a whole person approach to injury recovery illness wellness the whole person like you can't remove a person from their recovery context uh, anywho you can if you want to manage a claim but that doesn't help a person recover so so I was, I was really, really frustrated as a clinician for a long time going, I can't believe that we're still talking about this. Are you people stupid? Because, you know, it's me and I ask questions like that. Um, but realising yesterday that what's needed to happen is to bring this information uh, in, in a modern way of thinking and modern imagery and the modern workplace situations that, that people can relate to. And one of the things I found really powerful yesterday was turning the information about our clients and making it relevant to how we live and how we experience life. And um, we have this phrase in my industry very much about early intervention. Early intervention is everything. And, and sometimes early intervention isn't. Early intervention, you know, you, you don't want to go. I often use the analogy if you're sitting in a restaurant and you're running to the bathroom because you've just eaten an oyster that's really bad. Early intervention would suggest you sit back down and finish the rest of your meal. That's not good. Actually, you need to kind of move away. And let's face it, no one's ever going to go to that restaurant again and you're probably going to write a horrible review on Yelp about the restaurant experience. But trying to push somebody back to sit down and eat that meal at that point in time, that's not wise. And sometimes we need to understand how our work fits. We, we all want people to report symptoms earlier. We don't want things to progress and get longer. But we, we, we also want people to take responsibility for their own health so that they're not running to us every time they've cut, hurt themselves or scared about everything. We're going to build resilience in people. Anyway, I digress and I'm going on and on and on. It, it was a very positive experience. And I heard a young lady speak yesterday who has become quite well known in my world. And she presented uh, our role as, as rehabilitation professionals in such a new and unique way. She didn't say anything I didn't already know, but her presentation and her thoughtfulness around it 
totally reinvigorated me for the work I do. And um, for somebody who's a 20 year veteran in this work now, you can become a bit jaded and, and a bit old and set in your ways. And she just made me go, I want to be where she's going and do the work the way she's encouraging us to do it and be that person. It just so totally rocked me. I've, I've been chatting to her on LinkedIn today and hopefully she's going to be a part of the Purple Co um, events that I run next year because I just, oh, we just need that fresh perspective. So I want to encourage anyone out who, who's watching this today, if you've been doing this work or any work for any length of time, don't be put off by new, don't be put off by what, you know, per, the perception of competition. We've all got a message and we've all got a message that allows us to communicate in a modern way because really we've been dealing with the same issues since Adam was a boy, I've said that again, uh, for a really long time. Um, and fortunate, unfortunately, as a human collective, as the human race, we haven't been real good at curing us of the chronic conditions that we see. Anyway, I am digressing. So uh, back in the office today after being in the city and at a conference yesterday, so I'm, I'm a little weary, but we've had some pretty great successes and wins happening. It's starting to feel like the wind down to the end of the year, which I'm really enjoying, um, ticking things off my list. But something that I found out today in, in talking to um, the amazing Deb Eglin is that in my sense of overwhelm and trying to get some big projects finished, aka the book and now a house relocation, uh, I've, I've started, um, I've, I've gone back into an old pattern of unhelpful behaviour where I have multiple to-do lists in multiple places. I think we counted up five today and she, <laughs> she's got permission to address that with me in a month's time because I can't even have the headspace to even think about how I consolidate all of that at the moment. But it's interesting that when we get overwhelmed or where we get pressured or where we get stressed, we don't even necessarily think about this stuff. It becomes subconscious. It's what our old programming, the neural pathways we've already got set, set us up to do. So for me, I now have two notebooks with to-do lists. I have Google Keep and I have Evernote and I now have Active Campaign. Uh, oh, and I have my inbox because I have decided that that's how that needs to be used again. So what that is a symptom of is a symptom of I'm overcommitted, that I'm doing too much and I'm not giving myself time to think. So guess what goes into the planning over the next few days is making sure Joe has time to think. It's actually in my calendar for tomorrow afternoon with a, a calendar entry that says Joe to catch up with herself. Give myself 90 minutes. I have a feeling I might need longer than that. So coming into the end of the year, it, it, it feels like we get into this escalation. Um, th there's a lot of mental health services around where you see a spike or an increase in people wanting your services. Plan for that. If you're in Australia and you know that it's going to be a downturn in services, we need to plan for that. But please don't forget the fact that you're going to need to be doing your shopping and you're going to have family coming to visit you or not come to visit you. It, it's a triggering time of year. So let's just be kind to ourselves. Christmas happens every year. It's not a surprise. So let's just get used to what it's going to be like for us. So for me, I know my emotions are a bit raw at the moment because neither of my parents are around anymore. That's new for me. And even though things weren't great between my dad and I, it still matters that he's not going to be around. So I need to be prepared for that emotion and, you know, I don't enjoy emotions, so we'll just be prepared that there will be emotions because not being prepared, we know that side swipes you out of the way as well. So what's on your agenda for the week? What have you got going on that you want to fulfill or plan or get involved in? Amber and the incredible Melissa uh, Hall have um, created a brand new service. You'll see it on this uh, page. I, I posted about it today, um, a great curation service. Anyway, I'll, I'll post the link again. Amber, you might want to get in here actually and, and post the link for your Maven service, which I think is brilliant. And um, I think I probably need you, uh, just being honest. Uh, things with the book are still going. I don't have any more writing to do. In fact, I actually don't have anything to do apart from collecting some of the information from other sources at the moment. So yay, which means I might be able to get around to writing a blog post or two realizing that my blog post writing has really fallen off um, 
because there's only so much writing I can do in a, in a week. So that's private practice for me this week. I've got uh, not as much delivery, which I'm really grateful for, but my key um, activity for this week is to get to, to catch up with myself and to know that I can maybe we'll, we'll try and reduce my six to-do list down to five and, and see if we can get rid of some of this ineffective use of time I've obviously got going on. So thank you to all of you who joined in today. Uh, I can't see if there are any messages coming through or any comments coming through because Facebook's doing its thing again. So um, I will finish this video and I will come and address comments later on this evening. Looking forward to talking to you again tomorrow.